everyone who's joined us for this webinar. Uh, we will be introducing our innovative capabilities powered by generative AI. And as you've just seen in the video, uh, Phrase recently released a set of new capabilities with a focus on three key areas for uh, enterprise localization, which are quality, hyper automation, and scale. And generative AI is a big part of that. And that's why I'm very happy to introduce to you our today's speakers who will shed more light on the use of Gen AI at Phrase. I'm excited that presenting today, we will have Craig Stewart, a director of AI research at Phrase. Then we also have Yitka Hankova, product lead for Phrase TMS. Mansoor Khan, director of product for Phrase Strings. And last, but by no means least, Dan Jadarek, our product marketing manager, whom I'm past the floor to tell us more about the agenda today. So over to you, Dan. Thank you, Clara. Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to welcome you to today's webinar on our Gen AI innovations at Phrase. Uh, some of you might have noticed, but just last week, we released a tranche of exciting new features and even Phrase Portal, our newest product. But today we will be taking a magnifying glass to take a look at our new Gen AI releases. So we will start off today's session by um, sharing with you our vision for generative AI phrase, what our vision is, and then what we plan to do with it in the future. Then we will move on to the reality of what is possible with the phrase uh, Gen AI features today. We'll start off with AI actions, which is our Gen AI feature in phrase strings. Then we will move on to auto LQA, where Yitka will share with us how uh, large language models are transforming the way that language quality assessment is done in the Phrase platform. And our penultimate item is what's next for Phrase AI, where we will take a look underneath, uh, uh, where we'll take a look at what new and exciting AI features we have planned for the near future. And of course, we will end today's session with a live Q and A. So, without further ado, let's hear a little bit more about our Gen AI vision from the director of AI research, Craig Stewart. Hi, Craig. Hi, Dan. Thank you so much. Uh, great to be here. Lovely to see uh, so many participants. Um, as Dan mentioned, I wanted to give a little bit of context on the uh, AI vision that we have specifically around generative AI and some of the capabilities that we're uh, developing there, um, and specifically addressing um, three key pain points. We've talked a little bit about hyper automation in the past and what we think that means, um, but I wanted to give a context as a step back from that to understand and to help you to understand where our thinking lies around generative AI in particular. So we're very interested in the idea of scale. We understand that many of our customers are facing uh, an increasing, increasingly uh, uh, urgent demand to address the increasing scale of content. So we have customers who have much more content coming through the door, including things like user-generated content. And specifically, uh, we have some customers who are investigating opportunities to use generative AI to generate content themselves. And this is increasing the scale at which we need to operate and provide localization solutions. So scale is our number one priority. The second of these is in cost saving. One of the interesting opportunities that comes out of these new uh, capabilities is the idea that we can optimize around the human touch points. We can uh, drive cost savings by looking at the human task and understanding how we can optimize that task in particular ways 
and take advantage of some of the capabilities specifically of generative AI to tackle some of the hard to solve localization problems that we've not been successful in tackling uh, so far in the past. The third pillar of this is control. Um, a lot of this is built within the context of a larger quality framework where we're trying to provide both transparency, so the understanding of translation quality and the success of a particular solution that you have for localization, and then also uh, control over the process itself. Um, so being able to see how the solution is working and, and how fit for purpose that solution is. So on the next slide here, um, we've broken our, our plan, our, our AI roadmap into three core capabilities around our phrase quality technologies. You're gonna see another of these quality technologies coming in um, and uh, some, some other capabilities that, that sit within this realm as well. Um, but the three core uh, visions uh, that we have for, for our capabilities relate to uh, our quality technologies in particular automated scoring. So previously in December, we released uh, QPS, uh, the phrase quality performance score, and that piece sits at the center of our vision, being a, uh, a mechanism for automatically scoring the quality of translation uh, and localization solutions and understanding at scale what the quality of, of translations look like as they go through the pipeline. And so there's the automated scoring piece. We also have automated routing. So another piece that was released back in December is the idea that we can use some of this quality framework to understand where we want to route content and driving at those cost savings optimization in minimizing the contact that humans have within the workflow. And then the third pillar of these, which is the most interesting and, and kind of innovative of these capabilities that is now more possible with generative AI is the automated fixing piece is how can we take content that requires attention, given a particular risk assessment and understand how to fix it. How can we have AI solutions in particular, understand what is wrong with content and, and fix it up? Um, yeah. So on the next few slides, I want to show a little bit around uh, the, the context for some of the pieces that you'll be showing today and, and how we feel that they fit within the platform and to highlight what it is that we're trying driving at in terms of optimization. And so this is something of a very simplified uh, pipeline or workflow that could be built within uh, the phrase platform uh, where we have our auto select on the front. So the auto select is an existing AI piece that is doing the selection of MT engine for you. We obviously have asset management piece within the TMS where you can collect translation memories and, and fuzzy match to get the, the best result. And then you have the machine translation piece. And this mostly, if you are looking at driving optimization and really trying to automate as much as possible, driving towards that hyper automation, this is where to date we've been kind of stuck. Um, we require, uh, if we want to have any control over the quality of output from our machine translation, we, we need to have humans in the loop to understand that what is being delivered is of a minimal quality. Uh, and this is the point at which we see something of a bottleneck for, for, for customers who are not able to scale the human operations such that they can optimize uh, and, and scale to the degree that they'd like to. And so the human touch point here is, is the one thing that we're trying to address with some of these features. And so finally, in the next slide, um, I'll show you we have uh, the QPS. And so this is the, the initial uh, version and this this is a hypothetical workflow. It, it exists um, uh, already within the TMS. But um, what I'm trying to do here is put the pieces together to show how these individual features can be combined into a solution that provides this transparency on, on translation quality in particular. So QPS sits after machine translation and can provide a gating mechanism which can tell you is the content ready for delivery or not, depending on a particular threshold. And we're quite conservative in the threshold that we apply, such that we can minimize the risk of using this AI feature. Then we have the first of our uh, new features that Yitka will, will, will present in a little bit, uh, which is the auto LQA. Uh, and without giving too much of a spoiler, the auto LQA is doing something of the job of the human in doing a deep dive review of the translation content, right? To understand what is the, what are the problems with the content? What, are the, what, is, what is the criticality of the error that's occurring in that content? And providing optional routing mechanisms there that can uh, optimize on the amount of human touch that we have. The other piece that appears down the bottom that Mansoor, hand over to Mansoor in a moment and he'll talk about more, is a potential next step. So when you've identified that there is error in the content or that you've understood 
um, that content requires attention, what can you do with it? And, and, and Mansoor will introduce now uh, some of the capabilities around AI actions um, to allow us to see what are the kinds of things that you can do with content uh, once it needs uh, fixing up. So I'll hand you across to Mansoor. Thanks, Craig. And uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining. I'm Mansoor Khan. I'm the Director of Product for Strings. And today I'll be talking about the AI actions. Um, moving on, uh, AI actions actually is our first step towards post editing in Strings. And um, what it allows you to is that um, it allows you to go through predefined um, uh, predefined actions using OpenAI. Uh, we are starting off with four actions. Uh, we know voice of tone is something that every brand, every band has their own voice of tone, and that's something that we really um, uh, understood, um, and that's what it caters to. Then shortening it, uh, rephrasing it, improving grammar. These are some of the AI actions uh, that you can perform as a post editing um, step uh, for your all translated uh, items or uh, workflows. Um, one of the things that we, while developing it, we developed it for translators and localization managers. Uh, translators will be able to leverage uh, and produce high quality translations um, and uh, produce at a faster rate. Simultaneously, localization managers um, who are waiting on translators are unblocked uh, from now onwards and can produce uh, and review these translations uh, going by themselves. Uh, and this can provide up to 80% of time optimization in changes without needing a translator. So that's a huge um, um, benefit in terms of uh, in, in terms of uh, localization managers uh, who have been waiting on for translators or otherwise. And this also, uh, again, just to emphasize on it again, um, of our very first step towards post editing using OpenAI. Very excited about it. And now we can go ahead and see how uh, it actually works uh, within the strings uh, editor. So I'll go into, I've logged in into the strings editor now. And here you can see I have a bunch of keys in my project. I like to start off uh, with a quick one um, where uh, I'll select the translation and here you can see I'm going over my character limits. Um, here you would also see that we have a new icon in the translation tray, which is for AI actions. If I click on it, um, I would see a predefined uh, prompts uh, uh, with uh, all these translations. Um, I want to shorten it, so I would just click on, uh, I would just select it and click on the results. Um, Okay, so this, I'm happy with the result, I would apply. And here you can immediately see now it have reduced the character limit and it's, 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 um, it's uh, setting or it's on my character limit. So it's perfect for me. Um, I would save it and you can see uh, I've reduced um, the, uh, I've reduced the error as well. Simultaneously, I have uh, shortened the sentence while keeping the messaging same. So that's that's primarily the focus of it. Um, and then similarly, you can shorten it. Uh, there are different, um, uh, we also understood that there are different tone of voice for each brand. So we know a lot of brands use sometimes technical languages, some, some are using informal, some are using very formal. So um, these are the four basic um, uh, uh, tone of voice uh, that you can leverage in AI actions. So business, academic, casual, and technical. If you speak German, uh, you would see, you can see uh, that this is a formal uh, voice of tune and I like to make it more informal. So I would like to go for the casual uh, voice of tune, um, uh, tone of voice. And uh, over here, I would click on it to see a result. And here, hmm, I'm happy. Um, okay, so now you can see this is more of a um, informal um, and uh, casual uh, translation. Um, I would just click on it, save it, and that's that's how uh, the whole AI action is prompted. Um, and I've changed it from uh, from formal to informal now. And similarly, uh, I can show you a quick example of um, uh, formal to uh, to the informal to formal. Uh, over here, you can see the language uh, or the translation itself uh, is um, relatively very uh, um, 
informal but uh, since we have imagining we have a tone of voice which is um, uh, which is formal i would like to click on it um, i would go for business um, and mm, okay i'm happy with the results this is more formal than um, uh, than the previous translation um, and i would go ahead and save this and just like that um, i've improved the quality of my translations according to my uh, tone of voice um, similarly, these actions can also be performed on the source copy as well. So they are they can of course be performed on the target languages, um, some, uh, and they can also be performed on the source language. Um, and uh, yeah, this is part of um, um, early access program. So if you like what you saw, if you are interested in learning more. Uh, please sign up via um, the marketing landing page that we have um, and we'll be in touch with you. Um, I hope uh, this brings a lot more clarity to, you, clarity to you how the AI actions is being leveraged and it could be benefit, uh, beneficial for your workflow. Thanks a lot for your attention and listening uh, to me. Um, have a great day. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mansoor. I'll take over now and I'll walk you through uh, our all QA, but not only. Uh, my name is Itzka and uh, I work as a, a product manager at Phrase. And uh, we have quite a nice crowd today. So uh, let's let's also talk a little bit more about what LQA is. And uh, if you know all this, then hang on a little longer. We're going to get to the auto LQA bit as well. but. If you're not super familiar with uh, LQA just yet, um, maybe you'll learn something new. So linguistic quality assurance is a well-established process in localization industry. It's a uh, its goal is to ensure delivery of translated content that is linguistically correct, uh, culturally appropriate, and uh, technically accurate. So in other words, LQA is part of quality assurance that goes beyond the standard rule-based checks like spelling, punctuation, trailing spaces, um, et cetera. By applying LQA, um, you can make sure that the translated content meets the needs and expectations of your target audience or target markets. And to help our users understand which errors to look out for in their translations, we implemented the MQM framework. It provides a structured way to assess the quality across multiple dimensions. Uh, those dimensions are fluency, accuracy, terminology, style, and so on. I think there are seven of them uh, in total. And the MQM framework basically gives you a, a list of errors or error categories that cover all of those dimensions but it also explains what those errors are and how you can spot them in your translations, which is basically the core of linguists do in traditional LQA. They perform error annotation, meaning they read through the translated text, they flag mistakes, assign error categories from a list, and then they decide how severe that issue is by assigning an appropriate severity. Severities typically range from neutral errors, uh, sometimes called as preferential errors that typically don't affect the score at all, all the way to, um, to critical issues. And uh, at the end of error annotations, there is typically a score calculated and a rating assigned to the whole LQA assessment. And the final score can typically be in the range of zero to 100, and the rating will be either pass or fail, depending on the threshold. And all of that can actually be seen on the screenshot uh, on the right. In this sample assessment, we created a marketing LQA profile. We select the errors that we wanted to have um, evaluated. We set the pass-fail threshold to 90, and then we asked the, the reviewer to basically do the LQA, and the result was excellent, 99, uh, which means that our uh, translation passed and it met our quality requirements. But that was just a very simplified version of what actually, of what it takes 
to run um, and launch LK program within your company. There's way more to it uh, that we're going to see on the, on the next slide. There are a few steps that, that typically need to happen before uh, you can launch a program. So you would start with defining your LQA objectives. What aspects of the linguistic quality you want to check? Uh, you know, uh, what needs to be assessed? Does your marketing content require uh, checking different errors than, let's say, your legal content? And should all the errors have the same weight in the score calculation? Or do you want to penalize some more or less? Um, how do you want to penalize critical, major, minor, or neutral uh, issues? What will your minimum you know, quality requirement be or, or the pass and fail threshold, what would it be? And once you have that, then you can build uh, your LQA profiles. And then you need to choose the appropriate methodology and set up your workflows uh, accordingly. So you need to decide when you're actually going to perform LQA. Is it going to be the last step of all of your projects or just some of them? Uh, is it going to be a separate step or is it going to be part of some existing um, step? What qualifies the project to have LQA run on it? Then you also need to review if you have the resources in-house to do LQA in-house or if you need to ask your vendors uh, to do LQA for you. And once you have all these answers and all of that figured out, then you're ready to go and train your um, linguistic reviewers and, and provide them with guidelines on how to spot each error uh, you know, listed in a profile, how to correctly and fairly uh, assess the severity of those issues. Um, they need to know if they should use those preferential or neutral uh, errors or not, and so on. And obviously, as part of the training, you should also explain how the results of LQA are going to be used, how the feedback is going to be shared with them, or who's actually going to be shared with. And um, obviously, you also uh, need to check in regularly and review if, if your LQA program is performing as you expected, and if not, then pivot, uh, make some changes. So by going through all these steps, you might be thinking that, okay, that's, that's quite a lot. And uh, you definitely wouldn't be alone because when we talked to our customers, we learned that many of them were, they were wishing to launch an LQA program within their company, but the complexity of all of these steps um, discouraged them from doing so. And those that do have an LQA program already often mentioned that even though LQA does have its benefits, um, it's also quite costly and time consuming since you know, the, the error annotation requires significant time and effort from the reviewers. They need to read the whole text, flag the issues, and also ideally provide some explanation on why they flagged the issue the way that they flagged it or uh, assigned the, the severity, or even provide some suggestions on how to fix the issue or how to avoid uh, the issue in the future. And no matter how good your training and guidelines are, it's still quite challenging to maintain uh, the consistency in error annotation performed by different reviewers. And uh, last but not least, LQA simply doesn't fit all localization workflows anymore, since we see the localization trends shifting towards leveraging machine translation only or machine translation first with some post editing later when it's needed. These workflows are typically associated with fast turnaround times and, and lower costs and applying the traditional human LQA simply doesn't, doesn't work really well. So that brings me finally to the new feature uh, that you probably signed up for and uh, it's called auto LQA. And uh, in here, it's at the bottom of the screen. I, I borrowed a quote from someone. Uh, someone said it during our discovery calls. I think it's, it's quite fitting. And they said that it would be great to know if they were spending a lot of money to check something that didn't need to be checked at all. And uh, I like it because I think it quite nicely summarizes what, what we're trying to address with auto LQA. Because if you get a perfect score at the end of LQA. That's obviously great, but 
What does the score actually tell you in that case? I think it proves that your processes simply work, that your workflow works, that your linguists or vendors do a great job. And the score at the end is a confirmation of all of that. But is, is human LQA or the traditional way to do um, LQA always uh, the best confirmation? Because like I said before, currently LQA doesn't fit all workflows anymore. But with auto LQA in our quality assessment toolkit, hopefully you'll be able to choose the quality process that fits uh, the purpose a little better. So for let's say low profile content, like your least visited articles on your help center or something like that, you can maybe let auto LQA do the heavy lifting, you know, or you could use it to just quickly analyze your uh, custom empty models and understand if they struggle with accuracy, fluency, and so on. And then you can let your linguistic professionals to focus on the high profile content where their expertise, expertise matters um, the most. And with auto LQA, you will not miss on anything. Uh, you will get the same level of detail, just uh, a little bit faster. And you'll get the same results. You get the same, uh, well, you'll get the error annotation. You'll get the score in the end. Um, there's going to be the rating, as you can see it on the screenshot, then as soon you'll see it in a demo. Um, you'll get the scorecard that you'll be able to download, and you will also get uh, the analytics to keep and higher level uh, overview of how your quality performs uh, over time. There's just going to be a, a little less human intervention in the process. Right. So that was the last slide, and now I think we're ready to have a look at the demo. This is Jitka, and today I'd like to walk you through our new Phrase DMS feature called Auto LQA. Before we dive into that, though, let's do a quick refresher on what LQA means. LQA stands for Linguistic or Language Quality Assessment. It's a process used in translation and localization industry to ensure the linguistic quality of translated content. It provides a framework and a methodology for linguists to identify and categorize translation errors by assigning them an error type from a predefined list and a severity. All of these are then summarized in a detailed report called a scorecard. LQA can serve many use cases. It's typically the last step in localization workflow to detect and fix issues that would affect the user's experience with the final product. It can be used also periodically on samples of translated content to check that the quality level remains consistent. It's also a great tool to assess the quality of work of a new linguist or a vendor that you are onboarding to your team. LQA isn't applicable to human translated content only, though. It can be used as well to evaluate the quality of machine translation output or AI-generated content too. So what is auto LQA and how can it help you get detailed quality insights much faster than traditional human LQA? Let's have a look. For auto LQA, we're leveraging the power of OpenAI. Auto LQA can detect many errors. To give you a few examples, it can detect accuracy issues that, well, if undetected, can distort the origin the message of the text by issues like over translation, under translation, or by missing some parts completely. It can also detect fluency issues that are typically grammar or spelling mistakes, but it can also evaluate how the text flows or if it flows naturally and will be easily understandable to the reader. And once errors are detected, they're also gonna get a severity assigned. It can be a minor issue, major or critical. Typically at the end of LQA, there's usually a score calculated. In case you're wondering how the calculation happens, you can hover over the tooltip and you'll see the math behind it. It's fairly simple though, each error is multiplied by the penalty points depending on the severity. The errors are then summarized and divided by the word count. Then, uh, depending on the final score, the LQA result can be either a pass or a fail. So if it's at least 95 and above, in, in our case 95, 
the result will be pass, otherwise it's going to be fail. In case you don't want to have the score generated and you're only interested to receive the error annotations, you can disable the score calculation here. I'm going to keep it on though for the sake of this demo. And that's all the setup you need to do. So for each project, you decide whether you want to have auto LQA enabled or disabled by toggling this toggle here. And that's it. Then you're ready to launch LQA on your, pro uh, on your project. So I'm going to select the jobs that I created beforehand, and I'm going to run auto LQA on both of them. Even though I selected two jobs, there's going to be an LQA assessment for each language pair individually. So at the end, I will have two LQA assessment, one for Czech and one for Italian. As you can see in this column, LQA is currently in progress. And once we get the results back, the data will be updated in the same column as well. For the sake of this demo, I downloaded a, a part of our LQA article from our help center and I pre-translated it using our language uh, AI profile. So right now we're sending the source segment and the target segment together with the language pair to OpenAI. We're compiling the errors that we're receiving so that we have a job level evaluation. We're going to calculate the score, create the scorecard, and display the results here. And the first ones are in already, and the result is fail. So let's have a look at why this uh, LQA failed. And I can see that in Czech, there are three minor issues and seven major issues. So that's why the score is quite low. And now I can decide to either download the report as a scorecard that I mentioned earlier, and it's going to be an Excel file that's going to give you all the details. Let me show you what that looks like. So in here, you'll get the result, the score, what the threshold was, you get the language pair, uh, the word count, and you get a detailed list of the errors. So we see that there are going to be um, four major fluency issues in this text. And if I scroll down, I'm going to get a detailed log on where the issues happen. I'm going to show you all that in the editor. You can also decide that you need to share the scorecard with someone. So you can input their email addresses here, so click send, and the recipients will receive an email notification with a link where to download the scorecard. So I'm going to open uh, my check evaluation in the, in the cat editor, and I'm going to have a look at what happened there. I can do that by navigating to segments that have these flags. So if I click in there and uh, switch to LQA pane, I will be there directly, or I could have gone to LQA pane directly and navigate through the segments by clicking on each particular issue. As you can see, auto LQA always detects where the issue happens. It's uh, highlighted by this underlined style. So this sales was an issue in uh, my translation and auto LQA also provides an explanation why that is an issue and suggests a correct translation. I can go through uh, the list of errors like this or by navigating through uh, the, the editor. I can also filter issues that I'm interested in. So if I only wanted to see major issues, I could quickly do so like that. All right, but I mentioned that it's also important to keep uh, a high level overview of how my quality uh, is doing over time. And I can do that in phrase analytics in this quality dashboard. If you're familiar with our human LQA dashboards, then there aren't going to be very many surprises for you because these dashboards are pretty much the same. We're dividing human LQA results and auto LQA results, we don't want to mix the two. So if you're interested in auto LQA, please go to this auto LQA tab. And in here, I can see where the issues typically happen or what they typically are. So I know that um, my linguist struggle with accuracy and fluency, and this is my overall score. I could drill down to a specific language pair. So let's say I'm interested in English to check, and I see that the score is actually a little worse than the average was but 
uh, yeah, the language still struggle with accuracy. And I can pinpoint the projects where the score was the lowest, open them and see what happened there, and uh, hopefully apply some measures to improve the score in the future. All right, so that's all for our dial QA. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much, Itzka, for that wonderful demo. Um, as we saw, we have some very exciting Gen AI powered features, including uh, AI actions in phrase strings, and of course, auto LQA in the phrase TMS. Some of you might be wondering how you can get started using these Gen AI features. The answer is that we are currently running an early access program, which you can register, to, uh, register for on our websites. There is a QR code here, and we will also share a link in the chat which will take you to a page where you can register, register for the early access program. Um, we are receiving a lot of registrations for the early access program, so there's no guarantee that we'll be able to extend it to everyone. But if you would like to be considered, please register there. Of course, these features will be uh, released. The current plan is to have them ready later this year. So in, let's now take a look at what other things we have planned uh, relating to AI and phrase. Sure, thanks, Dan. Um... So first up here is uh, analytics. This is a little bit vague, but uh, the one thing I, I highlighted at the beginning of the session is that we're very interested in the control piece, right? Is that uh, we're generating now within the context of this quality framework, a lot of information and lots of scores and uh, lots of information about translation quality that we want to leverage in the best possible way, such that customers can gain an understanding of the success of the solutions that they're implementing uh, and beefing up our analytics platform such that we take advantage of some of these extra uh, data points so that customers can get an overview, uh, aggregated overviews of what it is that's going on within the context of their pipelines. We're also looking at opportunity for automated review uh, I saw from some of the questions that there's uh, interest in, you know, what is the future of the AI actions type of feature within the TMS platform. And we're looking at the different use cases for both, uh, for both pieces um, and thinking about them slightly differently. And in particular for TMS, we're, we're very interested in the opportunity for doing things like uh, review for consistency. We understand that generative AI has a, an amazing capability to look at uh, context and, and provide some uh, some information about how successfully the, the solution is working in terms of uh, generating the correct context, whether that be in terms of like terminology or brand or style and that kind of thing. So the automated review uh, feature in particular uh, that we're working on, uh, we'll, we'll look at some of those and address some of those different things. And of course, the one thing that we haven't yet done with LLMs is, is uh, MT. Um, we, 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 of course, have uh, very generic MT solutions through ChatGPT, uh, but our next MT solution that leverages the best of customer assets in guiding the output and constraining the output of a translation into a particular style space is something that's very, very interesting to us and something that we're actively investigating. So uh, next MT powered by LLMs um, is something we're also very interested in uh, in the near future. Wonderful. A lot of exciting things to look forward to. Uh, one more thing that we can take a look at before we go to the live Q&A are some exciting webinars that you can still look forward to. If you've enjoyed this webinar, uh, you have two other webinars which we have planned in the series to look forward to. Next week, we will be talking about Phrase Portal, our new newly released product, which was just released a week ago as a scalable localization solution for every employee. And then on April the 25th, we will also be having um, a vision-based webinar on navigating the hype around hot, hyper uh, automation, which uh, will see our chief product officer, Simone Bonnebrich, join in conversation by Dr. Arla Lomel from CSA. So a lot of exciting things to look forward to. Um, now we will move on to the live q and A's. So uh, we will start off uh, with a question from Tatiana. Can an AI action be applied to several segments at once? So we have uh, the four different actions which are currently supported, uh, the shorten, rephrase, adjust tone, and fix grammar. Uh, Mansoor, uh, can these actions be applied to multiple uh, segments at once? Uh, not in a batch action. So uh, it would be possible, it is possible to do it um, uh, key by key, um, but uh, in a batch action is something um, which we don't have it yet in the product. Also, there are some, uh, we are exploring this um, because it could also hit uh, open, AP, uh, open AI limits. So we need to be cautious of that as well. Wonderful. Next question from Marzio. 
uh, why differentiate between strings and TMS and not bring both AI features to both tools, considering that they are now part of the same package? Um, now, I have an answer for this, but uh, if there's something uh, quick that you would like to add, uh, feel free. Uh, so we are committed at Phrase to uh, delivering AI innovations across all of our products, and we've actually started doing that with our uh, December release last year, where we introduced Phrase quality performance scores. This was the first time that we released an AI feature across multiple different products, and today you can find Phrase quality performance scores in not just Phrase TMS, but also in Strings, Custom AI, uh, Orchestrator, and of course the new Phrase portal. Now, when it comes to our Gen AI features, these are currently in our early access program, but we are evaluating uh, meaningful ways to integrate them with our other products as well. I don't know if there's anything more to add to that, Craig. No, I think that's 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 fine. I mean, to highlight that uh, we we are a unified platform, and unification is the name of the game. So that's the direction in which we, the direction of travel. Uh, in, in particular, uh, it, it will take us some time to get there, but but of course we're we're very interested in in uh, the different use cases across the different pieces uh, as well, and trying to initially target the the most pressing use cases for each for each product. Um, but yes, unification is definitely the direction of travel. Great. Our next question again on AI actions. It looks like we can use AI actions in free strings on the key level. Can we use it on job level as well, so we can apply an AI action? on all the keys in a given job. Mansoor. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I've left a comment as well. Um, currently, it is not. Uh, they are available on a key level. It's something uh, we are exploring um, and a possibility for a future. But thank you for the validation. Great. Um, another question on AI actions. Is it going to be available in the phrase TMS anytime soon? Um, Craig. Yeah, so I partially addressed this when I looked at the the what's what's next. Uh, we are looking at a, a version of of these AI actions or or something else that we could do with this within the context of the TMS uh, use cases. So uh, watch this space. Um, there's definitely some uh, some some development and things happening in the background that I think should satisfy. Well. Okay, our next question is on Otto LQA. So I think this one will be for Yitka. Is auto LQA and connection with OpenAI secure to analyze segments, provide error category slash severity, and not, not to use any such data for public OpenAI usage? Customer text being analyzed by OpenAI may be confidential. Please confirm. Yes, I, I, I can confirm that. And if you're a, a phrase customer, then I believe a week or two weeks ago, we've uh, updated all our uh, existing users and customers with adding OpenAI as our SIP processor. Um, so we send those um, updates uh, to everyone and it also included a note specifying precisely that, that um, the connection through OpenAI, since all the content is gonna go through our account with OpenAI, we do have an agreement with them that none of the content that will go through this account will be used for draining at all any uh, open AI models or algorithms. So yes, your content will be perfectly safe with us. Wonderful. Next question from Marzio on AI actions. Um, is there a technical reason why there's not the possibility to, um, to simply specify a custom prompt or would that be technically possible? Yeah, it's... It's a very good question, something that we discuss internally as well while developing it. And um, there's a lot of risk attached to when we allow custom prompts. Um, uh, more importantly, it cannot also guarantee uh, the results, uh, successful results. Um, because we have worked on this predefined uh, prompts and tested them rigorously in terms of um, uh, different output and input and uh, testing the results with engines. Um, uh, this guarantees a success rate is higher than uh, doing it uh, custom. Uh, we're not ruling it out, but it's something that we, um, uh, at this point, we uh, saw that it would be better to go with tested and success um, um, results rather than uh, going with the custom prompt. Great. Our next question on LQA. Um, a limit that we found and had to work around tinkering with Excel macros is that it works on a file by file basis. Is uh, is it changing so that more files can be consolidated into a single word count or considering only parts of the file? 
Um, right now, as you saw in the demo as well, it's um, file based or, or job based. So that's not changing. Um, but I also made a point of show you how you can get a higher level overview in trace analytics. If you haven't used that, maybe that would be worth uh, checking as well. But uh, for now, auto LQA stays on a job level. Excellent. I'll follow up with another question from Teresa for you, Yitzka. Uh, can I add auto LQA to a template uh, to use it in automated job creation? So auto LQA can be uh, enabled in project templates. However, starting auto LQA currently isn't um, automated. So you could add it to a template to be enabled in that particular project. But for now, there will have to be someone going in and, and triggering uh, auto LQA. Wonderful. Next question from Mark Jones. Uh, can you explain the difference between scores generated by auto LQA and the QPS score? Do they correlate? Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, QPS stands for Quality Performance Scores. This was a feature we released last December. Uh, I think the, uh, the best person to answer this is Craig. Yeah, sure. Um, so yes, to, to summarize, they, they absolutely correlate. Um, and one of the reasons for that is that they're both uh, intentionally based around the same framework. So we're, we're both QPS and the auto LQA uh, are based around MQM. And we've specifically designed QPS such that it can try to give uh, an estimation of the MQM score that would be achieved uh, were it placed through either the human LQA process or the auto LQA process. Um, there is an update to the QPS score coming in the next few weeks, and both should uh, align relatively well. Um, but yes, that's absolutely the intention that they're all unified around MQM. Uh, our next question are, are AI action, uh, will AI actions be available in Phrase CMS as well? Uh, I think we, we've answered this question earlier in the session. Um, so we can go to the next one from M. Uh, will the AI actions be available directly in the editor? Uh, I'm unsure if I uh, just missed it in the editor. Um, so, Mansoor. Yes, uh, AI actions are available directly in the editor on a key level. Um, when you click on the translation, um, in the translation tray, you can find a new sparkly AI icon. Great. So the sparkly icon is in the phrase strings product. Uh, next question uh, for auto LQA. Is there any way to add checklists for each language separately? Uh, no, uh, there is not. Uh, there is uh, currently a, a very little uh, setup that you need to do in order to run LQA. So there's no even uh, a need to set different things per um, language pair. Uh, but I think I, I just uh, like to point out one thing that I maybe didn't really mention. And that's the fact that we're also launching auto LQA as an early access program. So that's the very first iteration of that feature that we're given in the hands uh, of the customers. And we really try to automate and, and simplify as much uh, of the setup as possible. So we're counting on you know, gathering that feedback from the early access program and see what kind of customizations will be needed going forward to make that um, solution really useful before we're ready to go um, forward with a, with a public launch. Great. Uh, and one more question about auto LQA from Jill. Uh, in the editor, is it possible to filter segments based on LQA scores? Like filter all segments with a score under 80 or all segments with a score between 60 to 70? So in here, I think it's important to differentiate between the scores. Auto, auto LQA will give you an overall score for the whole job. There's not going to be any segment level job. You will see the flags in the editor for each segment where the issue happened. But that segment score that you might be seeing in your editors is either coming from a translation memory uh, and non-translatable, or is the QPS score uh, that Craig uh, explained uh, earlier. Uh, coming from machine translation. So it's not, uh, auto LQA is not going to give you a segment level evaluation. We have different tools uh, for that. And as for filtering, um, it goes well, so it's tied to QPS. And I think we do have a few filters based on score, but not that granular. I think you can filter for 100%, um, 99, and then the rest um, 
there is a fuzzy filter, I think. So you cannot filter granularly uh, like that for those scores. Now we move on to our final question from uh, Emma. Um, given you seem to aim to automate everything and optimize human input, what role do you see for humans going forward? Uh, how can we persuade clients of the continuing value of human specialists if the output they see is highly plausible and critical contextual errors are effectively concealed? So I think a great question for us to uh, enter this Q&A on, and I'd like to hand it over to Craig. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and thanks for the question. I, I really um, I have a personal connection to this question. I've worked as a translator before, and I've, I've had these thoughts myself about you know, the, the increase of the use of AI in, in human workflows and what that means for the, for the human role. And I'm, I, you highlight the word optimize, and I'm very intentional when I use that word uh, because I'm very careful to, to not say, suggest uh, replace in its entirety, right? We have a range of customers with different use cases and requirements, and there's still, uh, in particular, many cases, uh, there's a very central role of the human in refining uh, and validating the output of these machine systems. Um, and I think that's that's very, very important and will continue to be important, especially where there are nuanced subjective expectations of quality. A lot of the framework that we're introducing in the QPS and the auto LQA are very good at, at picking up the objective linguistic quality expectation. And we rely still on humans to pick up the nuance of that subjective expectation. What is the particular style constraint? And of course, we are driving in a direction in which we're trying to cover some of those bases to provide options for optimization, but we're certainly not advocating the replacement of, of humans in any in any way uh, whatsoever. Um, yeah, great question. Thank you so much, everyone, for all of your great questions. That's all the time that we have today for our Q and A. Uh, I'd like to thank all of the panelists today for their wonderful presentations showing our AI features, and of course, I would like to also thank Clara for her excellent hosting skills. Um, with that, I would like to hand over back to Clara. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I think uh, not much is left now, uh, but I would like to ask our audience for their feedback. Uh, so right after we close this session, there will be a short survey popping up. So if you would like to let us know what you thought of this webinar and if there are any other topics that you're interested in and would like to see next time, please do let us know. Uh, we appreciate your feedback. Thank you very much and have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.